This is the DLR Cast, the essential podcast for fans of Diamond David Lee Roth. All right, once again, here we are at the DLR Cast, your podcast by and for fans of David Lee Roth. Darren, here we are at the tail end of a tough week, a long week, and Angel's got to smile every once in a while, so why not on me, my friend? Wow, that, that's a deeper one. That's definitely from No Big Ting, right? <laughs> You are close. That is from a little luck, but from the same album, your filthy little mouth. So there you go. What's happening? How are you? Good to see you again, Darren. Likewise. Great to connect as always. You know, pulling back the curtain on a Sunday night. The the Super Bowl is, what, two weeks ago yet? Uh, yeah. It feels like it might have been two months ago. I, you think about it, all this GameStop stuff. That was probably like three weeks ago, and that feels like it's six months ago. So who knows what day it is anymore? Dude, I can't keep track of things. Time is just a linear concept at this point. I'm not Wait, even sure what the hell is going on. Time is a linear concept. That, that's from uh, She's My Machine? It could be, possibly. Or no, maybe it could. I think it's somewhere in the graph, the graphic novel uh, sci-fi dystopian adventure from DavidLeeRoth.com that we talked about a couple months ago. Yeah, apologies to our listener who I offended by saying that the Roth Project was not uh, fully formed or anything like that. Apologies. He found a lot more meaning than than we did. But maybe, you know, when things slow down, I'll, I'll re-listen to the whole thing again. Yeah, it, it's, there's some interesting stuff there. So and always interesting stuff going on, too. Not a huge amount of Dave news, but some Dave related stuff mm-hmm. at the moment. Of course, Larry King Live passed away about a week or two ago. I think it was two, almost two weeks ago. And it got me thinking. I was reminded by a friend of mine, actually, that Dave appeared on uh, Larry King Live back in 1988 a day after scaling the man-made 45-foot mountain at Tower Records in downtown in uh, Hollywood there uh, in promotion of the Skyscraper album. David Lee Roth was making a lot of news back then. I think that kind of says a lot because the 88 era of Larry King, I'm not going to talk about his discography, the, the King discography per se, but Larry King was one of the biggest interviews of all time, if not the biggest. And when you were on his show, you were a newsmaker. You were a uh, pop culture figure or news story that everyone was talking about from every age. So it just says a lot that Dave was on the show in 88. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you were a newsmaker, you were on it. And it was interesting to watch the interview. One, it was funny. But two, it's it's if you compare now, we know Dave's just this constant big smile on his face right. and one one non sequitur and quip and it's a little bit tough to follow. And of course, we're all older now, but watching Larry King live, it, it's a bit of more subdued, kind of genteel sort of almost Dave. I mean, not as I don't want to say wired. It's just it's so interesting to see the evolution of somebody like that. I know we talk about things like that a lot, but just it's really dramatic and noticeable like. When I go back and listen to see interviews with, say, like Paul Stanley, it's yeah. very much a similar, very much a similar thing. And and I I was listening to part of about a week ago. I just one of these things, you know, YouTube offers you recommendations. And about six, seven years ago, uh, Dave was on the very excellent Jay Moore, Jay Moore podcast, comedian yeah. Jay Moore. And uh, and that was really interesting because. I mean, since then, he's been on what, Rogan? He's been on Mark Maron. Yeah. And sometimes it's kind of tough to follow along and kind of like, OK, I think he was asked a question about the band, but we just took it. <laughs> we just took a couple of side rails. It, I don't know. It just seemed that it was definitely a different sort of Dave on the Larry King live video. A really good and fun to watch. A great time capsule to talk about uh, to, a great time capsule. Go back and see at a time when Dave's solo career was at its very peak. I think that you hit the nail on the head there with somebody like Larry King, which I think it's unfair that some people mocked his interviewing skills. I'm going to say it's kind of the opposite where he knew how to moderate and lead the dance where, you know, uh, why is Darren using dance analogies here? Well, I'm a master dancer. Everyone knows that, but (laughs) (laughs) like Dave, I mean, Dave leads the interviews The, the last 15 years. You'd be like, Hey Dave, how's it going today? It's like a lightning bolt in your Cheerios, homeboy. Like yeah, exactly anything. He <laughs> <can tell us. laughs> and you kind of want that from him. 
And very rarely do you have an interviewer who like call call him out and be like, that makes no sense. And kind of Mark Marin did that, which was a refreshing thing in that interview, because Mark Marin just does not care. Or at least that's the character of Mark Marin. He's grumpy. He Yeah, and, and, and sometimes Marin, it's not so much – sometimes it's not – I think it's partially uh, – he works without a net completely. But very oftentimes – and I've seen him – I've listened to so many of the inter- interviews. But how many times have you heard an interviewer like, oh, my God, how do you not know that? It's not it, – listen, it's tough to prepare for interviews. You know this because yeah. uh, you interview how many people a week in your job. But uh, So there's a lot of preparation. I expect to know everything. But there's sometimes where it's just like, okay, did how much prep did you put into this interview? And so it's yeah. – every interviewer has a very different style. It's just really interesting to see Dave's style change throughout the years on these interviews. And it seems like the last – 10 years or so, it's kind of a mugging and grimacing Dave, you know, that, that, but it, go back on Larry King. It just seems to be a bit more kind of focused and, yeah. and it's just really interesting to watch. And I, perhaps I, that could be also partly too the gravitas of the situation, even gravitas, gravitas, you know what I'm saying? The, yeah. uh, in that, and in what I'm, <laughs> what I mean is who he's talking to, because Larry King was of course, Larry King in 1988. Caller, are you there? We're here with Diamond <laughs> David Lee Roth. You know? That's actually pretty good, Steve. I, I didn't know you had that in you. Uh, wow. But I, because of the, the aforementioned YouTube algorithm a couple of days ago, it pointed me to a Craig Ferguson interview that Roth did in 05 or 06 when he was promoting the uh, Strumming with the Devil Bluegrass album. And I think that was the beginning of when Dave's interviews, he started using laughs as, as punctuation or laughs as commas. Like yes. he laughs immediately the second that he said the last syllable so that you know it's a joke and that it's now okay for you to laugh. I think that was the kind of start of it around then. But an interesting moment in that interview is because Craig Ferguson's interview style was also a kind of a, eh, I don't care. CBS doesn't pay me enough. It was obviously a character, but Craig Ferguson was a punk rocker before stand up. He was, uh, right. he was, he was known as Bing Hitler. That was his guy. <laughs> like he played <laughs> drums and punk bands. He's a really cool, interesting guy. And he point blank asks Roth, so is Van Halen ever going to reunite? And Dave goes, yeah, I think it's inevitable. I don't think I remember ever hearing him say that before that. And if that was 05 or 06, the reunion was announced in 07? 07, yep. Yeah. So here's my question, or which leads me down the, the wormhole. Was Dave coming back with Sammy in, in 02 and then the 03 and 04 tour that went into 05 – where he was doing mostly Van Halen, like he did a little bit of Yankee Rose and going crazy, but it was pretty much a Van Halen show. Was that all the plan all along and Dave made the reunion happen? Uh, I don't think, well, boy, that's a good one. I don't know if Dave necessarily made the reunion happen per se. I mean, I don't think it came down to, I mean, it was interesting because after Eddie died, you started, you know, there was some interviews and particularly in the lead up to Wolfie pr- promoting what appears to be a great record, Mammoth WVH, that's coming in June, and he's been everywhere. But do you remember if uh, was it before after? I think maybe again, time is a linear concept. Uh, <laughs> it could have been before Christmas and New Year's, but I remember reading or hearing. Uh, I think it was reading Wolfie talking about where basically it was like, yeah, give Dave a call. You know, and it was like, and it just so happened, uh, Wolfie's real Van Halen upbringing, musical upbringing, as far as Van Halen, was those first six albums. And I mean, I think Wolfie was as instrumental as putting this thing together, if you if you can if you can believe that, and if, if there is such a thing for a kid who was 15 years old at the time. But it, I, I think that's perfectly plausible. Either one is kind of plausible. I think, though, when you look at those set lists back then, it was kind of it was it, it, that's where Dave thought his audience wanted to hear. And for the most part, you got to give him the hits. He was he's always about vaudeville and the big show and you give the people what they want. Right. And unfortunately, unfortunately, depending on your perspective, 
uh, they want the Van Halen songs. I mean, it, it's, uh, me, you and I, I'd rather see about a 50-50 bent, you know? I mean, I yeah. I would love to hear a little ain't enough because uh, there's a good, and I, we see this with every veteran band, right? There's the toughest thing in the world must be often, must be to, if you're a Kiss fan, I think we talked about this with Doug Broad a couple weeks back, is some of these veteran bands, how do you pick a set list? Because somebody's going to get pissed off. Somebody's going to be unhappy, you, you know, because you know the the audience isn't, the audience is not 80, 90% of the people who want to hear deep cuts from your filthy little mouth. Right. There's probably not even 20% there, right? But there, but as an artist, don't you want to showcase your solo work more? But I, Dave also w- always wore that flag proudly, knew where his bread was buttered, and knows knows what pays the rent, so to speak. And that's those first six Van Halen records. I would wholeheartedly agree, except if you look at the Mambo Slambo, <laughs> Mambo Slamo Jammers, whatever it was called, the first <laughs> Vegas residency from 95, where there was zero guitar players in the band. I think that was kind of an attempted jailbreak, an attempted, no, no, I'm more than Van Halen. And that stuff has really been wiped from the internet. I was lucky enough, like two years ago, to find kind of like the Tor EPK electronic press kit. If you remember that old music industry uh, jargon. Yep. uh, The five-minute demo documentary kind of thing that they used to put out to promote albums. I found that online and it had like the phone number for Diamond Dave Productions on it and all that. And it just mysteriously disappeared sometime around the Vegas residency of 2020. Hmm. Interesting. It, you just reminded me, too, that unlike virtually like virtually all veteran acts there uh, and I can I'll think of an I'll, I'll tell you who the other comparison is in a second. But the Mambo Slammers, whatever it's called starting with crazy from the heat for goodness sakes all the way through that that weird bluegrass thing that he did <laughs> dave always artistically wants to take chances so while you might know where that bread is buttered it also enables him to do some crazy different weird ass things go where his muse is taking him that's taking him down a road to do some bizarre film with a bunch of midgets <laughs> with machine guns in the no holds barbecue so be it if that takes him to japan to make some sort of uh spoke to make some sort of silent silent film uh uh, samurai uh, samurai organized crime movie <laughs> short so be it you know the only one i can think of who who has chased a muse like that and we're seeing this in play right now and i'm i'm sure somebody will think of other folks but well it's steven tyler tried to go country for a minute but that didn't even sound too crazily far from from aerosmith and certainly the ballads and stuff but look at paul stanley with the soul station stuff yeah. Stylistically, that's about as far removed from Kiss as you can get. Although I always, I will always venture to say that Paul Stanley brought a lot of soul to that band. I mean, I was, I would love to. Uh, I've seen, I've heard people do covers. There's a great cover online of "Sure Know Something" from the Dynasty record. That song's filled with soul. By the way, co-written by Desmond Child, if I recall. So, yeah. I, I kind of get what you're saying. At the same time, I just think if, if. He had to do that in that that time that era there. He wasn't promoting any new record, right? There was yeah. there was after your filthy little mouth came what um, the DLR band yeah. record in '95 and was that wait was that '90 '98? DLR band I thought was '98. '98. So your filthy little mouth of '94. DLR band was '98, and then there was nothing until that Diamond Dave record sometime in 2000. Well, it was before yeah. 2007. For the reunion, 2002, 2003. Yeah. So, I mean, it was, it was about getting out there and and giving the people what they want, I guess. Getting out there <laughs> and going out on the road. Yeah, indeed, uh, it was. I I can't, I I cannot confirm nor deny what you're saying. No, no, I got nothing to go with that. <laughs> <laughs> I think the key is we're starting to see more and more things that we forgot about from. David Lee Roth's past, including his time Van Halen, that just keeps popping up on YouTube thanks to these great algorithms. And I'm sure we're going to keep seeing more and more of that. A couple episodes we were talking about that marching band college show that Greg Renoff helped unearth. So right, I, which no, which the only people who knew about that were the people who were there. For goodness sakes, I yeah, never knew exactly. about that. Exactly. So 
Uh, well, and also right after Eddie passed, the the Frank Sinatra video intro that had Dave and Eddie in it. I don't think most people knew about that. Like, I can't I, imagine MTV was playing that a lot. I remember being extremely excited about that. And MTV did play it at least once because I saw it on MTV. For the, so- and the, so- <laughs> the song is called L.A. is My Lady. Yes. Which yeah. I don't think anybody in there, anybody at all has. Uh, <laughs> I don't think anybody uh, uh, has been looking for that song at all for any length of time. I don't know if that video is on MTV, but I distinctly remember that I was so excited to see. Uh, uh, you're all when you're fans of huge bands like that, especially when you're a teenager, to see anybody in a different sort of element because there was no internet. You're so excited. Yeah rare exposure and wouldn't that have been filmed after the panama music video i think so yeah so that might have been the last video the panama video came out after hot for the teacher or hot for teacher was the last one that one i'm blanking on right now because there's three videos from 84 right yeah yep so was that frank sinatra video the last video that eddie and Dave did. I mean, oh, no, I'm sorry. Tattoo. If you want to count that as a real music video or she's the woman being like the combined footage. Technically, yes. But I mean, classic Van Halen right there. That might have been the last thing that Eddie and Dave did until the 96 thing. I think. Yeah. I, phew, yeah, I think you're probably right there. So, yeah, it, it's sometimes the the last thing that people do is like the the least memorable thing of their whole career but it's true it, it it's true i mean if it, before the van halen reunion who was really talking about the two songs that dave recorded for the greatest hit sound besides folks like you and me i love me wise magic we've talked about that before yeah. but that would have always been regarded by critics as yeah this is the last two things that they did sorry they never got back together again and they were just two mediocre songs dusted off that dave recorded some uh, some vocals for i mean I, i'm not i'm not saying that that's not what i believe but i just yeah. wrote what 90 percent of critics would have said had they as part of uh, writing up eddie's obituary let's say or any recap of eddie's career when they touch on what happened to van halen and, and it was a shame they never got back together after that ill-fated 96 reunion at, with MTV and they did two songs for the greatest hits album. Boy, what could have been. But their last thing they did was these two mediocre songs. You know that's what it would have been like. It could have been. But I'm excited to see what else YouTube recommends that I like in the near future. I really think that we've hit the tip of the iceberg when it comes to stuff being unearthed based on how much has come out in just the last four or five months. True, true. And then, and then other news stories. I mean, you saw the one about Eddie's guitar tech for a few of the later tours that they did. Yeah. Poison. Yeah. Yep. If I knew more about electronics and guitars, that really would have blown my mind. But it was cool. It was cool to to get some inside stuff there a little bit, at least as far as. Uh, well, you know what? There was a real interesting part there, because if you remember on that, I can't remember what tour was it. I think it was a 2007 re- the tour where famously I think it was down south somewhere yeah. Eddie's guitar was way out of tune on Jump yeah. and the, the guitar tech said no this is what actually happened they for the one time they didn't come off the stage and after I think it was any talk about love and yeah. we d- didn't change guitars and he was beating the crap out of that guitar, whatever it was and it wasn't out of tune it was just and I was like, wow, that was kind of a little bit behind the curtain because I remember that just like going, oh, my God, it's all going to fall apart. This is horrible. Jesus. No, this is I, right. You watch that on you. I, I won't watch it again. It's like I don't want it. I cringed. Yeah, I, I took three big takeaways from that. The first is that Eddie didn't know about that for weeks, apparently, because he doesn't have the keyboard and his in-ear monitors. And that confirms something that I thought. Because I watched the the last show that they did with Dave in 2015 at the Hollywood Bowl. And Dave is, and you don't see any change in movement in Eddie's face. So, and he had to repeat himself once or twice to get Eddie to do the, we invented the rock and roll rumba. And you remember Deep Purple and that kind of thing. And there's no like change in Eddie's, you could tell when somebody's listening when somebody's not listening. And there was yeah. no change from Eddie's face, which made me think, wait, Dave's vocals are not in Eddie's monitor. <laughs> I have to be right about this. 
<laughs> and the fact that he didn't have the keyboard in his monitors and they did all their rehearsing even on the balance tour this was confirmed by uh, the former drummer of our lady peace who toured with van halen on the balance tour they generally rehearsed guitar bass drums no vocals so i'm wondering if oh sound they sound checked that way right they sound checked that way so if he didn't have keyboard in his in-ears or his monitors performing live he I don't know. I think maybe he on purpose did not have Dave's vocals <laughs> going on in his head. So that was the first thing that I noticed. The second thing I thought is amazing, which is they grabbed him from poison. Now, everyone ah. except yours truly looks down on poison. They're they're always thought of as like the lightest of the hard rock bands that they're pop metal, that they were studio manufactured clearly they're better than you think if they would go oh look at how he handles cc deville's guitars he could handle eddie's so mm -hmm. that kind of elevates poison a few levels for me and then uh what was the third part was it that eddie was shopping at at uh, ralph's um oh yeah 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 he, well the guitar tech his name now just escapes me he was he right before he was going to uh, 5150 he said let me stop at Ralph's and pick up a couple of things I don't know how long I'm going to be there and uh, I don't know is food involved in this it's probably going to be a long marathon whatever would whatever yeah. it was session or or whatever they were doing and at, he said in this interview as as he was thinking wouldn't it be funny if I run into Dave's I'm this close to Eddie's I mean what if I've run into Ed I should say I'm this close to his house and he said just as he thought about that he turned Eddie's coming up to him going hey I mean, just it's completely uh, serendipitous. I, I love hearing stories like that. There's lots of stories over the years. Ralph uh, from the band Steel Panther. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. I'm sorry. He's not Ralph. He's Michael. Is he Michael Diamond? Michael Starr. We didn't talk to Ralph. Yes. Friends. We spoke to Michael Starr. Right, right, right. Wrestling K. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he had a story about like running into Eddie in like the early 2000s with the period after Sharon before Roth was back running into him at Staples like picking up office supplies and kind of kicking himself going hey who's your singer I could sing all your stuff so it I'm always this yeah these you just reminded me these sorts of stories what 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 celebrity magazine was it was it us magazine where there's always that spread there's just they're just like <laughs> us there's there's Ryan Reynolds crossing the street from Trader Joe's, you know, and yeah. I rem I remember I wouldn't even know. Again, I certainly wasn't looking for this, but believe it or not, there was video on YouTube many years ago of Dave tucking into a salad at some food court. <laughs> and I remember thinking, why am I? I literally I found it by accident. And then read some of the comments was like. Was he sitting there alone for? You know, it's like, and I'm just like, first off, somebody shot this, so shame on you. Let yeah. alone upload it. Second of all, who gives a shit? But then again, that same person in me, it's like when you see your your heroes, just they're just like us. You know, they yeah. shop at Ralph's. I mean, and I've heard various stories of that. I mean, I there was, what was it, a couple of years ago, somebody got a picture of Dave coming out of a cigar shop. You know, on a bright sunny afternoon, he got his Mercedes and drove away and said hi. You know, I mean, and we always talk about this but I, Dave and especially the last couple of years Dave sightings my god you don't know whether he could be on any side of the earth for goodness sakes has he been in Japan right now who knows Eddie sightings were certainly no. rare <laughs> even when he was healthy right Alex you never see I mean seriously it's it's they were amazing at keeping this shit locked down and and I suppose when you make that much money and you can live a lifestyle where maybe you don't have to go out all the time so we sit there and go how cool would it be to run into freaking Eddie Van Halen and Ralph's? You could have a lot, probably. And, yeah. I, you know, I, how great would it be to see Dave putting a little ranch dressing on his freaking uh, Chipotle salad or whatever the hell he was eating? I don't freaking know. But, I mean, was he, I mean, just – so it's it's – it's with a kind of a weird goofiness. I have to laugh, but also be randomly curious about that stuff, but then check myself and go, come on. <laughs> uh, I, I think that you'll change your mind for the better when you look at Gene Simmons at Costco photos, because Gene Simmons loves some Costco and the paparazzi gets him there a lot. And he is yeah. about his love for Costco.
But who who the hell am I? All right. If I saw David Lee Roth or Gene in Costco, well, one, I wouldn't go up to either of them. I would just I mean, I in previous careers and you've met him, too. I mean, I don't like to impose. I've done dozens and dozens of backstages and done events with artists before and stuff like that. And I don't want to name. I'm not going to name drop, but some were heroes. And I've been lucky to meet several a lot of heroes. I've never met. I've never met Kiss. I've never met Dave. But if I saw them. If it was an event where you're supposed to meet him, it's one thing. But if I saw any one of those guys, I would I gawk? Would I stare? Would I be checking things out? Yeah, but I would be. That would be from 30 feet away, and I damn sure wouldn't be taking video of it. I just wouldn't feel right about that. It's this weird imposition. Leave him be. Now, when I go back to my friends, go, you would not fucking believe it. But Gene bought at Costco. He <laughs> he just dude. He loves the freaking Kirkland uh, rotisserie chicken. It's amazing. I heard him talking to the guy. He said he loves it. He said it's a great deal for four ninety nine or whatever it is. I would go back and I would be you know talking about that for three weeks, but I wouldn't tape it. You know, I mean, I wouldn't. I say it depends. It depends on karmically how bad they are. Because let's say Ingve <laughs> Malmsteen, and you think about all the bad situations that Ingve. Wait Malmsteen, a minute, that's Ingve J Malmsteen. Oh, you're correct. It's Ingve J Malmsteen. There, because there's a lot of them. <laughs> not to get, <laughs> not to get confused. He was trying to join that musicians' union, and there was already an Ingve Malmsteen, so you had to be sure, of course. Uh, you know, if you look at all the hard times that he's put people through, I wouldn't mind razzing Ingve in public because uh, y- if you ever hear the tape of him unleashing the fury, his words at a flight attendant, uh, <laughs> there's certain people you just like you wouldn't want to bother, say, Dennis DeYoung from Styx because he seems like a nice guy. But Ingve, yeah, different story. But I love see, I just love seeing stuff like that anyway. Do you remember? I think we talked about this, but coming back from was it? Australia, I think it was when Van Halen did a couple of dates in Australia, Sebastian Bach of Skid Row found himself sitting next to David Lee Roth on the jumbo jet on the way back to L.A. And he said they just I heard him on an interview a couple back in the summertime on Eddie Trunk. And he said Dave was reading and just and they're talking. And they would just laugh their asses off. And there's a picture of the two of them together. And Dave's got like cheaters on or whatever. And it's just <laughs> I mean, it's that it's. That's why I love Candid Camera as a kid. Not so much of a weird it, – it wasn't some sort of – all right, listen. Some people get hit in the groin is always a good laughter. Not, But, you know, so America's Funniest Home Video, sure. But seeing your seeing your heroes when they're just like us or just out of – in a different element than you're used to seeing, it's kind of cool. I don't even know how we got on this long. We just went off I on some crazy – ass Because I said the man was Gene Simmons Costco. <laughs> and, and that is just a pathway to internet gold. It, it's like when you put in Glenn Danzig cat litter, uh, <laughs> that group of him shopping for kitty litter. And uh, that's kind of viral. But I, I, I'd say it, it, if we could recap our conversation, uh, good interview with Eddie's former guitar tech. Great performance by Wolfie on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Interesting to see what happens from that. Uh, Dave had a great Larry King interview in 88, a not <laughs> 2005 Craig Ferguson interview for strumming with the devil. Um, Steve would not bother Dave at Costco if he saw him, but if he saw him eating a salad, he'd be intrigued. Uh, sure. Where, sure. <laughs> <laughs> stuff might be unearthed again soon. Hopefully, uh, did we miss anything here? Uh, well, it's been it, it's it's all been pretty quiet on the news front, except one thing, one last thing here kind of popped off recently. And I don't know if you, I know you saw this. We were trading links about it, but I saw a blog post go around. Can you help with a 30 year old David Lee Roth quest? And it is actually with one. It's an extremely long story. It might take you a minute, but it's really, really cool. Back when this back in 88, this 13 year old girl was seeing David Lee Roth solo, even David Lee Roth for the first time. And Dave called her up on stage and pulled her up on stage and we came, he came off stage and then uh, came back and said to her, do you want to dance? And then brought her up on stage and they danced. And the whole quest is, does anybody have any pictures of this from back in 1988? And you probably read about this. You might know a little bit more about it, But I just thought it was a really cool, cute, although albeit pretty lengthy sort of um, piece. It took the, me a minute to just like, yeah. The young ones say it's a TL uh, semicolon DR. 
that the too long didn't read too long didn't read but you know what it's actually it's actually kind of it's it's very much not to critique anybody's writing but all the details of this experience for this this young girl uh she wrote about it's just it was actually pretty cool but i guess dave yeah. bent down there said want to dance and <laughs> pulls her up to dance i think was it during jump maybe um during jump yeah. and the story goes that he never pulls up anybody on stage. Ever. Never. I don't never heard of that happening. But he, as the story goes, pulled her up. And it's one of those, I swear this happened. And everyone going, yeah, right. Where's the photos? And the person next to her, she thought, was taking photos of it. But the photos were exposed or didn't come out or she lost touch with the person. I think the question is, does somebody have the whole show from toronto 88 on youtube i'm pretty sure that one has come up for me on youtube but i didn't watch it to the end yeah good question that's the thing and that's kind of that's one of the things that always bugs me and i i think this is a huge a big big miss when it comes to david lee roth and his career is that there was never a home video released of either Edom and Smile mm -hmm. or the Skyscraper Tour, particularly the Skyscraper Tour with all, with the surfboard and and just the light show and I mean well, and Edom and Smile had the, yeah, yeah the boxing mean, Edom and Smile had the biggest lighting rig up until that point that time but can you imagine like a pro shot 10 camera yeah just imagine it starts off with that very high speed little bit of film of the stage being all put together you've seen this in dozens of concert films right with the trucks pulling yeah. in and it's, it's it's a super fast uh speeded up film to see uh four hours worth of work compressed into 30 seconds yeah. and then the taking the little backstage footage taking the stage i mean God, the fact that there was never and certainly nothing's ever, nothing close to this is leaked on, on YouTube. But was there then there's bootlegs out there, but not a ton. But, but it was but certainly nothing like really professionally shot. They the fact that Warners didn't go to Dave and just bingo at a time when home video concert videos were starting to blow up. The fact that Warners didn't uh, go and said we need we, and who knows maybe they did and Dave said no I don't know I have no idea but it always seemed to be to be a big miss as far as what could have been a great piece for their catalog. Have you ever seen the '88 skyscraper tour of Japan shows that they put on YouTube? Yes, I've seen bits and pieces. The audio and the video isn't always synced up, but uh, yeah, but, but some of the video looks like it was totally professional. Like how would they have gotten those angles? And where it I'm does. You're yeah. right. So where I'm going with that is lately because of YouTube thinking <laughs> that I want to see a full Danger Danger concert from 1991. Uh, it keeps giving me all these concerts that look like they were shown on Japanese television in the early 90s. And they're totally pro shot things. I don't know if they were just like one off concert specials, but all these cool things of Night Ranger, <laughs> Skid Row, <laughs> Uh, I just said Danger, Danger. I think I've seen two Danger, Danger ones, which makes me believe that maybe Danger, Danger was huge in Japan and just bigger than they were in the States. But what well, I'm getting is maybe these 88 Roth shows were part of a TV special over there. Because haven't we talked briefly about how for The Little Ain't Enough, like he did some TV commercials over there promoting the album? I, it was either that or skyscraper, but you just remind me that it could have been brought. It probably was. There was something broadcast I bet on Japanese TV because lots of bands did that. I mean, the footage that you see from Cheap Tricks live at Budokan, the concert footage from all that, that was from Budokan. I think another night in Japan, and that that whole DVD did come out when they reissued. I think it was the 25th or 30th anniversary of Budokan in like a two DVD or two CD and one DVD. It's a great package they put together. But that whole concert and that was in 79 or whatever 78 79 i'm sure they weren't thinking of home video but that was recorded for the japanese market i'm sure it was broadcast at some time maybe that's the same thing that happened with skyscraper on that tour and uh but just how cool would it have been man come on steve vice heart guitar the whole <laughs> bit the three neck thing are you kidding me dave's freak i mean just dave's weird headband that tour which always drove me crazy that weird hairstyle i mean dude the bolero jacket which remember that was the first first time we kind of saw that and then he brought a variation of that in 2007 back in reunion these are the dopey things that i that freaking keep me up at night as a fan man but the footage of the boxing ring is perfectly shot 
so that you couldn't just think that a fan snuck in a great camcorder and knew where all the lighting cues were going to hit during that show. That's why I think it was a properly filmed thing that either aired on TV or just got nixed and put in the vaults because maybe he didn't approve it. So maybe one of our crack listeners will will know what the answer to that is. Kind of like when we were talking to Ron Wixo that we learned about a 94 live EP that we didn't know existed. Uh, right, exactly. Yeah. So if exactly. we just pull all of our brain power together, we can solve this and other 30-year-old Dave mysteries. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm just thinking, Darren, this conversation, of course, is always we start off in one place. We end up somewhere else. That's what happens when uh, two fans, not fanboys, prattle on and on about the mighty diamond David Lee Roth, I guess. I guess. Yeah, that basically sounds about right. But I think we've solved the (laughs) mystery here. You're all better people as a result of listening for these 35 minutes or so. So you're welcome. There you go. Well, I'll tell you, if you have, if, 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 if those of you out there have get half as much enjoyment out of this as we do chatting about it, we'll consider that a victory. So wait, was that, that a Roth lyric? No, 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 no I don't no. think Some, sometimes I just have to make sure that that wasn't a deep cut. It was an, not an alternate take from the vaults. No, no. <laughs> Not at all. So, all right. Well, folks, thanks for downloading and streaming. We really appreciate it, of course. Be sure to uh, f- be sure to check out our previous episodes if you're new to the podcast. We got some great stuff there. Got some great stuff coming ahead too in the next couple episodes. Some more cool interviews. And uh, from here, I'm saying good night. Yeah. Thank you. Great job, us. Good night.